Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. We recently did a video on the basics of Italian cheese, where Eva took me through all of the kind of normal Italian cheeses, what the differences were, where they were from, etc. It was a lot of fun, I learned a lot, but I realized recently that I know actually even less about Italian cold cuts and salami. As you can see, we've assembled quite a few here. And when we decided to do this video, I didn't realize how many we were going to have to go through. So uh, I'm even more confused than I thought I was, apparently, because I basically don't know what any of these are. But Harper, don't worry, because uh, I know them very, very well. So I'm here to explain you and to teach to our friends what we have in front of us. I figure maybe we should start somewhere where I'm at least somewhat familiar and I was going to propose that we start with prosciutto but I honestly can't tell what is the prosciutto here so I'm going to need you to help me out. We start uh, from the prosciutto, yes I agree but uh, the problem is that in Italy we have two kinds of prosciutto which means Harper we have this that is Prosciutto cotto. Cotto means cooked, right? Cotto means cooked because as uh, the word say, this is cooked. And then we have this. It is uh, the prosciutto di parma or prosciutto crudo. So prosciutto di parma, which I've heard before, is the same as prosciutto crudo? Yes, but we have two kinds of prosciutto crudo in Italy. We have prosciutto di parma that is the sweet one oh. and then we have prosciutto crudo di montagna that is a little bit saltier than prosciutto di parma so not only are there two types of prosciutto there are two types of prosciutto crudo See? it's all coming together i suggest that we can start from the prosciutto cotto do we just eat it uh, right now up here yes but in the italian cuisine we use prosciutto cotto also if we want to make for example uh, pasta al forno or usually you can find prosciutto cotto also on pizza so we can use prosciutto cotto also in several ways mm. not just eat by itself buon appetito buon appetito oh okay it's like ham okay let's say Harper that it makes you think ham, but ham is a little bit sweeter than prosciutto cotto. Yeah, norm normally it's sweeter, but it, it's clearly... What, what part of the pig is it? This is always the leg of the pig. Yeah, so yeah, it's the same. It's what we would use to make ham. I think, I think, double check me on that. <laughs> Just realized I actually don't know very much about ham either. <laughs> Okay, prosciutto crudo. Is this the same this is the same part of the pig, right? This is always the leg of the pigs. Would you would you cook with prosciutto crudo? Please guys, don't cook the prosciutto crudo. It happens to me the first time that I was on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean that I went to a pizzeria, an Italian pizzeria, and they put on prosciutto crudo and it was cooked. So when you cook the prosciutto crudo, guys, you have just a piece of salt. So don't do this. You can use prosciutto crudo on pizza, but what we do in Italy is we cook the pizza in the oven and then when the pizza is ready, we take the prosciutto and we put on. Mm. Prosciutto di Parma. The prosciutto di parma is one of our treasures, so it's like we are proud of prosciutto di parma. This is the cotto, the prosciutto di parma is much darker. Is it like smoked or anything? No, 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 no. Prosciutto di parma is not smoked. Okay. It's seasoned with uh, salt, mm -hmm. it's uh, kept uh, in a big room, uh, usually with the wind, so it's seasoned in the proper way. Mm, yeah. it, it's a labor of love. Yeah. Buon appetito. Yeah, that's not a that's not ham. That's not ham. This is prosciutto crudo di parma. Yeah, it's got a very um. It has its own taste. Where my it's... words fail me here. Yeah. It's strong, but it's delicate at the same time. It's sweet. The prosciutto di parma is sweet. Yeah, I can't quite. You can't, can't quite compare it to anything. 
No, it's unique out there. <laughs> it's unique. It's British to Parma. They do just in Parma. I'm oh. trying to think of like any other just pork product I've had that tastes like that, even at all similar, and I and I can't. I can't. Okay, next we have something that I actually recognize. If I didn't know better, if I hadn't had it before, I would say, oh, here's some bologna. No, Alper. But I know that's a bunch of bologna. This is mortadella. The name bologna come from, came from the fact that mortadella is made in Bologna. So, Bologna is the city in Italy. Bologna reminds the, the name of the city. But there is a huge difference between the bologna and the real mortadella. It is a very popular cold cut in Italy. Every one of us had panino con la mortadella. It, it, see, it looks like bologna. It looks like what in America we would call bologna. It doesn't look that different, except for perhaps the... Um, the pistachio nuts that you can see in there. I've never, maybe we have it. I've never seen a bologna with that in it. I think also, cause like in Bologna, correct me if I'm wrong, they're like very proud of mortadella. And if it's not made there and in their way, it's not real mortadella. And I think that's where the expression, cause in America we say that something is bologna if it's not true, if it's false. It's fake. Yeah, and I think that's where it comes from because if you, if you say, oh, this is, this is mortadella, but it's not really from Bologna, it's bologna. Alper, personally, I love prosciutto cotto, I love prosciutto crudo, crudo but I'm a mortadella person. <laughs> Buon appetito, Buon Alper! Appetito. It's so good. It's kind of buttery, almost. It just sort of like melts in your mouth. It's fatty. It's very fatty. It's fatty. Yes, let's be honest. But it's delicious. Okay, as a taste, it's not crazily dissimilar from what we would call bologna. It's like you can see the relation. Calm down, calm down, calm down. It's, it's, you can see the similarities, you know, it's not totally, totally, totally different, but it's like bologna that's like amazing and delicious and not, let's be honest, kind of gross. It's buttery, it melts in your mouth. It's pep. It's kind of got peppery, a pepperiness to it. It's amazing. It's mortadella, Albert. <laughs> Up next, we have something that almost looks like thin bacon to me. Guys, I love bacon. I like bacon. But, Arper, this is spec. It's made in the north of Italy, it's made, uh, it's traditional from uh, Trentino Alto Adige. Mm -hmm. The name Spec seems like the least Italian name I could possibly imagine. Where does it come from? It comes from uh, Sud Tirol, Trentino Alto Adige, in the north of Italy, because after uh, you should know that uh, in the north of Italy we have a community who speaks also German. Mm, buon appetito! Buon appetito! Oh, wow. Okay. Looking just side by side, other than perhaps the shape, uh, the speck kind of looked to me like the prosciutto di Parma. So I was curious how different it would taste. The speck tastes very smoky. It's smoky. Okay, all we eat uh, as an antipasto, like we had now, you can put the speck, for example, in the in a sandwich, in a panino, you can put speck uh, on the pizza. And also here, don't cook the speck when you put speck on the pizza, otherwise you will have a slice of salt. And next we have these little sort of round guys. They kind of look like in the same family as speck and prosciutto, but with a little bit more fat marbling. This is uh, Capicolo. Oh, I'm, v I'm familiar with that name. I see that on uh, menus and stuff in like Italian delis. It seems to be a pretty common Italian cold cut along with like prosciutto. I see that, so funny story. I've seen this on menus before 
and I've like seen it at a store and it looked, it looked, it, I remember thinking like, oh, that looks good, but I didn't know how to pronounce it. I wasn't sure if it was Capicola or Capicola. And so I didn't order it because I was embarrassed I would mispronounce it. <laughs> True story. Anyway, so it's Capicola. No, it no. is <laughs> See? Capicolo. And this is traditional from Calabria. It has nothing to do with the prosciutto di parma or with speck because the Capicolo is a spicy. So you like have this cut of meat and you spice the outside and let it... I see. Salt, uh, spicy pepper, uh, you can find also black pepper, and you hang the capicolo mm. now, I don't know, 60 days, uh, 50 days, uh, mm. maybe more. We should ask to make that. Yeah? <laughs> what cut of pork is it? This is upper, another question that we need to ask to my dad. <laughs> so Harper, this is your first slice of Capicollo? I think so. Mamma mia Harper, buon appetito! Buon appetito! Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's not spicy spicy, it's not like ooh, but it's, it's spiced. That's very good. I like, I like, this is good. <laughs> He likes Capicollo! He likes Capicollo! Yeah. I knew that in the depot he was a man from the south. If only I'd known how to pronounce it, I could have had it <laughs> ages ago. <laughs> We're moving on to one that I'm guessing is uh, sort of in the same vein because it's obvious. I mean, I can just tell from the edges. I hope you can see that. It's uh, got these sort of red edges that definitely suggest to me spices. Here after we have what we call pancetta arrotolata. Because this is uh, sliced, uh, the shape is not the same. Usually this is uh, rolled pancetta. Mm. It's seasoned also this. It's pork meat. Pancetta. And pan yeah, pancetta is like a pork belly. It's a pork belly, yeah. yes. Also, this is produced here in Calabria. Because let's say, Harper, that uh, wherever you find uh, spicy pepper, <laughs> you are sure that it's from Calabria. <laughs> Buon appetito, Harper. Buon appetito. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I absolutely love Calabrian pepperoncini, the spicy peppers. I love the flavor. Uh, I even made my own hot sauce here. Maybe I'll show you guys that at some point. Uh, this has a much spicier flavor than the Capricolo. It's much, you can really taste the pepper in that. That's excellent. Mm. Mm. Now I'm in slightly more familiar territory because I'm pretty sure this is salami. This is uh, what we call uh, salame Milano. It's a sweet uh, salami. Mm -hmm. So this is from the north. This is from the north. So I'm not uh, expecting spicy. Uh, no, this is not spicy. Okay, that's like very similar to, I don't know what you would call it, the sort of basic salami you can get in any store in the US. It's like it, it, if you buy salami at a store, you see salami in a package, like it's that type, I think. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. That being said, that's particularly delicious, if I may say so. Salty, peppery. Thank yeah. you. Fat here? No, 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 no. absolutely no. not. <laughs> Pretty sure this is also salami. And this looks like it's going to be right up my alley. As you can see from the color, obviously we are going back to Calabria because this is the spianata calabrese. You can eat uh, like an antipasto. For example, Mamma Rosa, she used this salami to make the lasagna. Another thing that you should know is, uh, okay, when I was in USA, I always saw pepperoni pizza, pepperoni pizza. When in Italy you want a pepper, the American pepperoni pizza, you should ask for pizza diavola. On pizza diavola, usually you find this spicy salami. Buon appetito! Buon appetito. Ironically, it... It looks like it would be very spicy. 
it's less spicy to me than the than the um pancetta it looks very spicy it looks very spicy. It's, it's good don't get me wrong it's spicy but it's not it's it not, surprised me that it wasn't like much more spicy than the, this is made for uh, calabrian palate this is made for italian palate <laughs> This one is throwing me for a loop because it's significantly different from all the rest. It's dark, it's almost red, and uh, maybe for once there's zero fat. Here you are in front of what we call in Italy Bresaula. Mm -hmm. So until now we had just pork. Oh, this isn't pork? This is not pork, this is bull. Bull, so it's beef. Mm -hmm. This is beef. Okay. And uh, as you said before, uh, it's more or less without any kind of fat. It's very, very useful if you are on a diet because uh, it's low in calories. Not that you can eat two kilos, but... Uh, I, I can tell looking at that, that that is just 100% protein. It has a uh, high quality <laughs> It's <of> like... <laughs> yes. Bon appetito. Bon appetito. Dang. That is some red meat. If you're like a red meat lover, like I am, it just... Mm. Mmm, it hits you there. Mmm. Mm. You can eat as an antipasto. A very good pair is uh, bresaola, slice of bresaola, arugula, pieces of parmigiano, good olive oil, black pepper, and you eat. Yeah. If you're the kind of person who likes like a, like a really, uh, like kind of a rare steak, like I do, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> Now we're down to some interesting looking items. These uh, sausages here. What are we looking at? I'm a proud Italian, as everyone already knows, but if I'm a proud Italian, for sure, I'm a proud Calabrian girl. And these are our two diamonds of mm. the Calabrian cuisine. Here we have the soppressata calabrese and here we have the sotizzo calabrese. And they are both made by my dad. Traditional old recipe. There isn't anything strange. Pork meat, salt, spicy pepper. That's all. So Harper, we start from the soppressata. Now, how do you eat soppressata? Soppressata should be cut very thin. You need to cut a thin slice of soppressata. You can eat this uh, for antipasto. Uh, actually, my dad, uh, he makes also pasta with soppressata. You can add this to the tomato sauce because it gives the spiciness and the taste of the pork meat. Uh, you can uh, enjoy it because it's a moment of happiness. Buon appetito, guys! Buon appetito. That's the spice That's I'm the looking spice. for. That's where it is. This is my favorite one. What other than the size, what's the difference? No, this just the size because uh, oh. the meat is the same, but because it's uh, thinner, uh, mm -hmm. it changed the taste. Maybe you don't believe me, but it changed the taste completely. While the suppressata, you should eat a thin slice with this harper. You cut a piece. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it's almost like weeping <laughs> fat there. Buon appetito. Harper, buon appetito. Mmm. Mmm. I really didn't see how just the size, it's the same meat, it's the same ingredients, could change the taste. It's completely different. Number one, this is much harder. And I imagine what's going on is that because it's thinner, it takes less time to age. And so something about the amount of time it takes and how quickly it dries all the way through, it, Change. it changes the flavor, definitely, yeah. It's a very intense flavor. It's a very intense flavor. It's very, very spicy because you can taste right now, also now, 
the spicy of the spicy pepper or peperoncino calabrese. Well, this is normally the time that we make something. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I think that I'm thinking what you are thinking. And I bet some of them are thinking what we're thinking. So let's show what all of us are thinking. Let's do it! <laughs> Here we have perhaps our favorite sandwich of all time. The one and only panino con mortadella. Panino con la mortadella. But this time after we had some drop of lemon juice. I noticed. So we can say that this is the panino con la mortadella Sicilian style. Because in Sicily they put some drop of lemon juice. And even with this twist, it's still one of the simplest sandwiches of all time. One of the best. Buon appetito! Buon appetito. Just as good as I remembered it. In its simplicity, it's amazing. The lemon juice is a nice touch though. Grazie Bologna. Thank you guys for watching. We hope that you learned something about Italian cold cuts and salami today. I sure did. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow us on social media at Pasta Grammar, and we'll see you next time. Ciao! Ciao.